This plugin makes compression easy. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Intuition Compressor from AIX DSP makes compression so easy because it gives you visual cues showing you how you're affecting the waveform while you're controlling the compressor. Now it normally costs around about $150 but it's on sale at the moment for $59.99. However, if you go ahead and use my exclusive coupon shown on the screen at the moment or in the description down below, you're going to get a further 20 20% off. Now I'm going to make a prediction that by the end of this video many of you are going to be very tempted by this compressor. Let's take a look and see why. We're going to be using some real world examples with this plugin later but first of all we're going to use a sound you don't often hear in the real world and in my door that sound looks like this. This is white noise and as you can clearly see there's some quiet parts and some louder parts to it and they're coming in one second bursts. Now we're not going to listen to this because frankly it sounds rather annoying but it is useful to look at in the plugin. If I play this sound now without us hearing it we can see it looks like this and we can see those quieter and louder parts passing by over time. Now this is useful because as we use the controls in this plugin we're easily going to see how those controls affect a simple sound like this. I promise real world examples later but let's start with this. Arguably the most important control on a compressor like this is the threshold control. We can see it at the bottom left here. What does it do? We'll talk about that in a moment but first of all as I adjust it you can see a visual representation of that adjustment at the top with the yellow line. In fact we can even grab that yellow line with our mouse and drag it up and down to adjust the threshold. Now what I'm going to do is actually play the sound from my door. We can't here of course but we can see that waveform passing by and I'm going to use the freeze function with this plugin which is at the top right here to freeze that waveform in time and I'm going to use that as a reference as I set my threshold control so as I adjust it we see that yellow line coming down and I'm going to set it to a level which is just above the quieter part of the signal and definitely well below the louder part in fact I want to set it precisely in this case so I'm just going to go down to the bottom and type in uh, the value of minus 10, minus 10 dB, okay? Now, at that level, it's just above that quieter part. So what we're saying to the compressor is don't do anything if you're below the threshold. But once it goes above that threshold, that's when the compressor is going to act. And the main thing it's going to do is turn the gain down. How much do we turn the gain down by? Well, that is determined by the ratio. The ratio on a compressor is expressed as two numbers separated by a colon. So we can see here that it says 1.00 colon 1, or we would say a 1 to 1 ratio. Now I'm not going to go into detail here about exactly how the ratio value adjusts the signal. If you want that let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a separate video to explain some of these things in a little bit more detail. But for now the main thing you need to understand that the higher the value is on the left hand side of the colon the more gain reduction we get once the signal goes above the threshold. Okay, let's see that in action. I'm going to unfreeze my waveform. You can see it passing by here and I'm going to gradually push the value of the ratio up. Now as I do that you can see at the top of the screen some things are changing. Again I'm just going to freeze it in place. So the red area right at the top indicates the actual gain reduction which is happening okay now below this we can see two gray areas we've got the light gray area which represents our waveform after the gain reduction and also the darker gray area which represents the waveform before the compression okay so right away visually we can see the effect that we're 
having okay so i'll just unfreeze it again and i'll just adjust the controls a little bit more and just push that up and you can see we get more and more gain reduction and we can see that at the top right here with this little meter which is showing gain reduction okay so the other thing that i may want to do though is adjust the way that this looks now we've got two main views on this compressor we've got the compressor controls and then we've got the scope controls if we switch over to the scope control controls i've got a number of ways to adjust the way this looks i'm not going to go through all of them now but what i want to do at the moment is adjust the v scale so i can kind of separate that waveform from the gain reduction which is being shown in red at the top and i'm going to adjust the horizontal scale so i can just fit a bit more of my waveform onto the display let's go back to the compressor settings now we can see here if i freeze this that we get a very sudden change from the compressed signal to the uncompressed signal remember once it falls below the threshold it stops compressing the signal well what if you want something a little bit more gradual than that that's where attack and release come in the attack control on compressors is often misunderstood so it's great that we're about to see a visual representation of what it does so we can see exactly how it affects our signal so i'm going to unfreeze my waveform here and gradually push the attack control up and as I do that you can start to see how it affects the gain reduction let's freeze it so we can take a closer look now the full amount of gain reduction is determined by the ratio value that we set earlier but as we can see here once the signal had passed over the threshold it started to adjust the gain right away but didn't get to the full value until we get to the bottom of this slope here that represents a length of time which is determined by the attack control that we just adjusted now where people sometimes misunderstand this is they think that once the signal goes over the threshold the attack control creates a kind of a delay before we start compressing but as you can see we actually start compressing right away but it takes a little bit of time before we get to our full value of compression so can you guess how release works so whereas the tack is concerned with how we start compressing the signal release is concerned with how we stop compressing the signal once it falls below the threshold at the moment we can see that once we go below the threshold there's an immediate change there's no gain reduction happening to the quieter part of our waveform but if if I unfreeze our waveform and gradually push up the release control, we can see a change start to occur. Now I'll freeze it again and we can see that once the signal goes below the threshold, it's still being compressed. There's still some gain reduction being applied and it gradually returns back to its normal state over time okay now that time of course is determined by the release control that we can see at the bottom let me know in the comments down below if you've just had an aha moment and understood attack and release for the first time now that's enough of our white noise examples let's move on to some real world examples now one of the things i love about this plugin which i don't think i've seen on other compressors is the ability to load in some sample material so you can play around with your compressors settings and see how they affect it just go up to the browser at the top right here select a file and then you can play it by clicking on the play button here i've got this snare loaded up this is the default sample by the way and it sounds like this now you can also set this to repeat so you can click on the loop button here and then when you press play it's going to loop until you press play again So this is very, very handy for experimenting with settings. Now, a couple of other things that I changed while you were away was I switched on this control down here, AGC, which stands for Automatic Gain Control. As we know with the compressor settings we saw so far, we are primarily going to be doing gain reduction, so making things quieter. This control compensates for that and kind of keeps things at a similar level. And this is really handy for when you want to kind of hear 
the character um, of the compressor, how it's changing the character of the sound without having a massive volume change while you're doing it. So I've got that switched on. And also finally, I've switched on the limiter, which is included with this compressor. Very quick explanation for a limiter. It's quite similar to a compressor. Once we go above the threshold, there's gain reduction, but it's like having a really, really high ratio set. So there's hardly any signal or maybe no signal that goes above that threshold okay so that just sets our limit in terms of volume so i've got that switched on i rather like that and finally i'm just going to experiment with the display a little bit i'm going over to my scope controls again and i'm going to switch this on trigger so what this does when i've got this switched on is it triggers an action now that trigger occurs when we go above the threshold which is set to minus six yeah and what actually happens when we play our sample we'll see is it redraws the sample over on the left hand side of the display this can be handy if you just want to see it redrawing the same waveform again and again in the same place and we're going to use that for a moment so let's listen to our snare look at our snare and start off by messing around with the threshold and ratio controls because we need to adjust those for anything to happen at all so i'm going to do that take a look at what i'm doing and what effect it's having So you can see here right away that there's lots of gain reduction happening right away because I have that threshold set pretty low and the ratio set reasonably high, okay? So right at the beginning of the snare, it's sort of crushing the beginning. Now that very loud part at the beginning of a, of a sound, whether it's a snare or another sound, that sudden loud part is called a transient. So I would say we're kind of crushing the transient um, with this on this snare, okay? And it's happening right away. Why? Because the attack is set to zero over here. So the compressor is immediately kicking in and it's releasing again once the signal falls below the threshold so let's sort of slow down that attack a little bit by pushing up the attack control I'll keep playing the snare and we can see there's a little bit of a change there now the gain reduction is happening gradually as we saw earlier but this is now with a real world sound and it releases almost immediately because um, it's falling down below the threshold. Let's slow down that release a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so you can see that happening there. Now, this may not be what you would actually want to do to this snare, but now using your ears and your eyes, you can get an idea of how the controls are really affecting this sound. And I think that's what makes this particular compressor plugin so very powerful now i've set it up like this so that i can demonstrate another couple of controls that we haven't looked at yet first of all i'm just going to switch that scope back so it's not triggering and i'm going to have a look at a couple of controls which relate kind of to attack and release remember earlier we talked about the attack and we said that some people think it's actually sort of a delay control so nothing happens for a certain period of time it's not like that compression kicks in right away it takes time to get to full compression but we can create a delay with this punch control over here let's play our snare again right we can see what's happening as it was before and let's turn on punch and turn it up and see what happens now And I've frozen it there. You need to look kind of carefully. But can you see there's this kind of big gap there, isn't there, before any compression happens at all. So that is the punch control. And it's fully letting the transient of this snare sort of poke through. And we're not compressing it at all. So you can kind of understand why it's called punch. I'm going to turn that down and switch it off. We've got another control which acts in a similar way. But this time it's going to relate to release. And that is the hold control. Again, it creates a delay before any release happens at all. So let's play this. 
and then push up hold and I've frozen that and you can see here that before this release happens which happens over time we get this big long delay where there's complete gain reduction you can kind of see how it's affecting the waveform down here with this kind of dip that we see so it's really again very very handy that we see all of the effects visually of these controls and we can really it's not so much you know we hopefully we do understand what the controls do but it's giving us a precise indication of how they're affecting the waveform let's try another example now i should say that if you're listening to this video using those tiny speakers on your cell phone you may not hear much of the next example because we're going to be listening to a bass guitar you don't hear much of bass guitar through those tiny speakers use some earbuds some headphones or go to the studio and listen on your studio monitors Let's have a listen and a look at what we've got so far with this bass guitar. Now you can see that there's a small amount of gain reduction already happening with the settings that I've already set up around about sort of two decibels or so, which is not that untypical for something like an instrument like a bass guitar sometimes we just do subtle compression just to control the loudest parts and kind of even out the playing a little bit but that's not why i have loaded this bass guitar up because i want to demonstrate something to you called sidechain compression and that's a feature of this plug-in and with sidechain compression we can take the signal from another instrument in our mix use it to trigger the compressor here but apply the compression to in this case the bass guitar so what i want to do is use the kick drum in my mix to trigger this compressor i'm going to unmute the kick drum now so that you can hear it with the bass guitar And what I'm going to do is route the sound of that kick drum to this plugin. Now, how you do that in your door may be different to my door. So I'm not going to show you how exactly I've done it, but typically you'll do a send from the kick. And if you've already inserted this plugin on the bass guitar, you'll see this plugin as a destination. You'll just send that signal to the plugin. Now, before we engage side chaining on the plugin itself, we need to click on this side chain button so i've done that let's play the track again and see what's happening now now right away visually we can see it looks very very different we've got these very very short amounts of compression which are being triggered by the kick and being applied to the bass guitar here. Let me change some of the settings a little bit so we can make it a little bit more extreme. Now we can see here right away that the kick here has kind of created a big hole in the bass guitar waveform. You may not be able to hear it that clearly, so let me just turn down the volume of the kick so that we're only hearing the bass guitar. Let's have a listen. So hopefully you can hear that now. It certainly sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? But when you put the kick back in, it sounds reasonably normal. But this really helps to keep the kick punchy, okay? Because it's moving that bass guitar out of the way when when it's actually playing now you may have heard about this in the past but with this plugin you can actually really see what's happening and make fine adjustments and kind of just see what all of the controls are actually doing and how they're affecting the bass guitar with that side chain signal now just because this compressor is easy to use doesn't mean that it hasn't got advanced features i didn't get to mention in this video things like the feed forward and feed back modes and also the 
bust mode, which mimics the release behavior of an SSLG and a few other features I didn't get to mention. It's really great, especially when you consider the price you're gonna get with that code. Now talking about the code, when you head over to their website, make sure you check out their other plugins. They've got things like gates, they've got EQs, multiband compressors, etc. And you can also use this code if you purchase some of those plugins as well. Definitely worth checking those out. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.